everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm here to share a process video making a pug love card for a friend of mine who loves her pugs. And it's a surprise and it's for no particular reason. I just thought it would be nice to send her a card to let her know that I was thinking about her. Anyway, I am coloring up with my Copic markers these adorable little pug dogs. They're from a stamp set called Love Dogs by Joy Crafts which uh, I picked up, I think it's a Dutch company, um, but I picked that up recently specifically to make cards for friends with pug dogs. And these little cuties are so adorable. And I'm just doing some really simple Copic coloring. I'm not really paying attention to light source or anything like that. I'm just kind of putting down a kind of a light base coat of a light tan. I believe this is an E51 or an E81. The slightly darker one is the E81 now. And I'm just kind of marking in where I think the shaded areas would be, kind of where the wrinkles are in the muzzle, on the sides of the face, on the lower parts of the body, because the body is like it's really substantial. So it's gonna cast a shadow and the lower parts of the body are gonna be in shadow. So that's really it, simple, simple Copic coloring. And I'm gonna also color in the areas where the stamp image itself has some shading, those little dots on the back, the curly Q area of the tail, the wrinkles on the forehead, and I'm leaving the ears uncolored with this tan because I'm gonna go in now with a warm gray. I tend to want to use the warm grays the W line for animals or living kind of objects. Uh, and I use cool grays or the C line or N line, the neutral grays for inanimate objects like shading or the ground. So right now I'm using a warm five, a W5, which is a little bit lighter than the uh, W7. And I'm using that to just, again, reemphasize where the shadows are going to be, where the wrinkles are. And you can see that I'm adding wrinkles like to the underside, outside edges of the eyes and around the outside edges of the muzzle. I'm actually creating the lower line of the muzzle. And um, you can see that I'm also kind of trying to create uh, little kind of curly cues or wrinkled areas in the muzzle. Those aspects aren't actually in the stamped image, uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't draw those kinds of things in. And what's great about pug dogs is that like most, you know, living creatures, it's not exact. It's not straight lines. It's not, um, you know, they're all unique. So it's really easy to kind of go with the flow as it were and draw in those little lines and those shadows and don't get caught up in, oh, that line wasn't in the stamped image. I can't color that or I can't create those lines. Go ahead and give it a try. You know, if you have a stamp, you know you can stamp it out again if you don't like the results. Um, I'm adding in a kind of a warmer uh, tone along with these light tans. The E line um, has a huge range and I'm using the E81, which is an ivory. It has a little bit of a cool undertone. And the next darkest shade, which I used was an E84, which is a khaki. It has a greenish slight tinge to it, but I also try to warm it up with an E51, which is supposed to be like a milky white, but it has kind of a pinky undertone. So I think it warms up the pug dogs. Now I'm going in with a slightly darker warm gray. This is the W7 uh, because I know that pug dogs actually do have much darker faces and ears. And I think that this will lighten up a little bit as the alcohol marker ink dries. Right now it's a little bit blotchy or splotchy, uh, but I'm gonna go back in and blend out with the next lightest shade. So right now you see me putting down the W7, but now you're also seeing me put in the W5. And I'm making the male pug dog on the right a little bit darker than the female pug dog on the left. Uh, she has a little bow, obviously. 
And I'm doing that just so that you can see a difference. No two dogs are gonna be exactly the same. And even with or without the bow to distinguish, I wanted to make sure that the two dogs look like little individuals. And you can see that I left some highlighted areas too. And I think that that really adds to the realism of the pug dogs. Now I'm gonna take a lighter red. This is an R22 and I'm just putting a base coat on the bow. And then I'm gonna add some shadowing where the bow kind of cinches together with an R27. I also color in the heart with the R27 and later on that's gonna get covered with stickles, but I just wanted to kind of block in the color. I'm adding a little bit more warm grays to the muzzle and in the video it's looking really dark, but actually in real life you can see a lot of the detail of the wrinkles on the muzzle and on the forehead and I like how that came out ultimately. Now you'll see me drawing in and sharpening up the stamped image around the eyes, the nose, the little mouth opening. I'm doing that with a Copic Multiliner pen. This is a 0.03 point, it's really fine. And I do that because after a lot of coloring, sometimes the ink bleeds over or the stamped image isn't as crisp as I would like. I stamped this image out with a Memento Tuxedo Black ink and that's because that's an alcohol safe, alcohol marker safe ink, but it's not as crisp as like a VersaFine would be. Now I'm adding some highlights with a white jelly roll pen and I'm redefining the outside of the iris, the dark part of the eye. I'm making sure that the highlight stays in there, but I'm taking that Copic Multiliner and really defining the eyeball, the little iris section. I'm also deciding to put in some highlights on the little noses and that came out a little bit messy. So I'm again, redefining the sharpness of the noses uh, with that Copic Multiliner pen. That Multiliner pen, the white gel pen, and later on you'll see me using a Zero Blender pen. Those are great for cleaning up kind of slightly messy coloring. Uh, now you see me putting in the ground, just the essence kind of of the ground itself so that their dogs don't look like they're floating. And that I'm doing with a Copic C3. Here you see me pushing back in the ink that I had <laughs> colored, the pug dog that had kind of gotten outside the lines, and that was with the zero colorless blender marker. Now I've decided to cut an edge, a decorative edge along the bottom of this card front, and I'm using a Pretty Pink Posh Stitched Borders 2 die, and I think that that's a really pretty kind of edge detail, and I'm gonna cut off a little bit off the top also, but you'll see that in a second. I'm gonna line that bottom area of my card base, which I've made out of craft cardstock, with this really pretty plaid pattern paper. This is from an old Graphic 45 collection called Good Old Sport. And now you see me just mark where I want to cut the top of that card front. Just, I marked it with my nail, no measuring. I just kind of eyeballed it. And I'm cutting probably about an, an inch off of the top so that I have more of the plaid pattern paper showing beneath that really pretty decorative border. I'm just using some snail glue adhesive and placing that card front over top. Now I'm taking a sentiment from the My Favorite Things uh, you make my tail wag stamp set, and that's the sentiment that I'm using. For the sentiment, I use VersaFine ink, and it was much crisper. Um, this is the inside liner sheet. I'm using more of that scrap of uh, pattern plaid paper, and then I'm just using some white cardstock for that liner. Now I'm taking some antique linen distress ink and a little uh, paw print stamp and I'm just gonna add that little decorative touch on the inside of the card. Just a little path of paw prints running across. Now here I'm adding some glitter glue or stickles to the heart. That's a cranberry color. And for some finishing accents, I'm also adding some champagne gold stickle dots on the lower left and the upper right. I hope you enjoyed this process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a wonderful crafty day.